and linear systems video. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about two common signals we'll use a lot in this class, the unit step and the unit impulse. Uh, these are fundamental building blocks that we'll use to uh, describe signals or to describe operations. And they're a little more complicated than they were in discrete time, particularly the unit impulse. So we'll start talking about them today, but come back to them uh, several times during the semester. OK, so let's switch over to the whiteboard. So the first signal is the uh, unit step, u of t, and the unit step is the signal that is 0 in negative time and 1 in positive time. So its equation looks like this. So there's the, uh, the equation. Again, 1 for positive time, 0 for negative time. And it's kind of undefined. Different people have different definitions, depending on what they want, at t equals 0. And, and we'll see a little bit more with the unit impulse why that's an issue. Uh, if I were going to graph it, the signal will look like this. And with the picture, we see why it's called the unit step, right, is that it's 0 in negative time, and then it takes a step of a unit height up to 1 when t becomes greater than 0. And again, to be, you know, again, to be uh, clear, this, or this is a signal we'll be using a lot this semester. Again, I should label it clearly. It's 0 here, 1 there, and this is the signal u of t. Okay, so that's the unit step. We can use this to, to practice our, some of our common signal manipulations. For example, you could say, well, if that's the unit step, what if I had u of uh, t minus 4? What would that look like? Well, it would just be the same as we saw in the discrete class, a delay of 4. So if I graph that, I get this figure. And we can see that the signal has shifted to the right by 4 points in time. And if I wanted to keep playing games with this, another thing I could say is, well, what if I had u of t uh, minus u of t minus 4? So what if I define a new signal to look like that? So to solve for this equation, I would just take the first top graph and subtract the bottom graph from it. So for negative time, they're both 0. Between 0 and 4, the top graph is 1, the bottom graph is 0. So 1 minus 0 is 0. And then once I go from 4 onwards, they're both 1, and it goes back to being 0. So that's a very easy way to define a rectangular pulse that runs from 0 to 4. So let me sketch that. So we get a pulse that looks like, like this plot here. Another thing that might happen, we'll see, we'll do a lot this semester, is, is we'll look at integrals of things. So maybe I would define a different signal. Suppose y of t is the integral from minus infinity up to t of the unit step. So I, I need a dummy variable. I'll call it u of t d, t, d tau. If I'm going to take this integral, well, again, I can sort of use the different regions depending on t. If t is less than 0, I'm just integrating 0 for the whole time. But if t is greater than 0, I want to break this into, so for t greater than 0, I want to break this into two pieces. I'd say that y of t is the integral from minus infinity up to 0 of u of tau d tau plus the integral from 0 to t of u of tau d tau. Well, but then this first integral, we say, thinking conceptually, what's it going to look like? Well, in fact, maybe pause the video for a minute and think for yourself what you think this, this signal y of t will look like, and then come back. OK, so now that you're back, the, well, from minus infinity to 0, the area under this curve is just 0, right? So this first term is always going to be 0. And then I'll have the integral from 0 to t. Well, u of tau from 0 to t is always 1. Right, so this becomes, uh, the integral of 1 becomes tau evaluated between the limits of 0 and t. So this becomes t. So if I sketch this signal, it just goes along being 0, and then it ramps up because the area under the curve keeps increasing. So it would look like this, where it's 0 up in time till time 0, and then I have a line with slope 1 going up. And that slope is not an accident. That slope 1 is because the amplitude of this constant signal is 1. So as I 
move along here, the area under the curve keeps increasing at a rate of 1. And so this would be my signal here. So those are some games to play with the unit step. Now let's look at the unit impulse. And we'll see the unit impulse in, in continuous time is a little trickier than it is in discrete time. And we need to be aware of that, that, that it's, uh, it's a very real engineering concept. The idea of a pulse of energy that comes into the system very quickly, faster than anything else in the system will respond. Is, is something that, as engineers, we, we're used to seeing, but mathematically it can be tricky to define. One way to define it, though, is to say that the unit impulse is the derivative of the unit step. So if you looked at that picture on the previous page, if we back up to the previous page and look at it, we say, well, the, the derivative is the slope, so it would be 0 through this region and 0 here, but then there's a discontinuity at the origin, and so that's the, the tricky part, right? That, that, that this would be 0 for t less than 0 and for t greater than 0. But to have that step, it means at the origin, I need something that has area of 1, right? Because I've integrated over it and jumped up by 1. That means the area under this thing has to be 1. So it's infinitely narrow, infinitely tall with area 1. Right, so, and the way we represent this is we just draw it as a little arrow, sort of double arrow like this, to say this is an impulse. And we put the area in parentheses next to it to remind ourselves it's not the amplitude, but the area. So this would be my picture of delta t. And we saw these a little bit in frequency, right, when we had the Fourier transform of sines and cosines in discrete time. We needed these in continuous omega to make them the impulses. Uh, another way you can think of it, if it, if, it, if you want it to find a little more practically, mathematically, is, is to think of it as a, uh, a, a, a the limit of a pulse that is, is uh, delta wide and delta 1 over delta tall as it goes to infinity. Right, so we can think of the limit as delta goes to 0 of something like this. This is between minus delta over 2 and plus delta over 2 is delta wide and 1 over delta tall. And so the area of this thing is always 1, but as delta goes to 0, it will get narrower and narrower and taller and taller. So you can think of it as a limit of this function. And there are two key properties for the unit impulse response. The first is the one we just mentioned, the unit area. And what the unit area says is if I take the integral over an impulse, I get an area of 1. Right, so the integral of delta of tau d tau is going to always be 1. And the second important property is the sifting property. And that has to do with what happens when I multiply delta of tau with something else inside an integral. When I, and, and by something else, I mean another function. So if I have x of tau times delta of tau, well, you can imagine by multiplying any other function up here on top of it, it's going to be 0 everywhere except right at this point where it pulls out that value. So this will be equal to the value of x at the time, at the location of the impulse, which in this case is 0. It's pretty easy to show with a change of variables. If I shifted the impulse, I can pull out values at other times. So I could take this integral. Right, so if I have now that the impulse has been shifted by V, it'll be at some new location. It'll have moved over. So I could maybe draw that quickly and say, okay, here's my impulse at V. Here's my other function. Here's my X of tau. Not surprising, what it's going to pull out is the value right there at V now. So I'll get the new value. I've sifted out the value of X at this new time V, the location of the impulse. You can also do this with a change of variables argument uh, more mechanically, mathematically, if that sort of thing makes you more comfortable. But again, that, I'll wrap up here. The two main, two main new functions here, uh, unit step and unit impulse. Uh, and the unit impulse with the two important properties that it has unit area and the sifting property we'll be using a lot this term. So I'm going to stop here. I'll make a different video uh, to talk about periodic signals. There are also sines and cosines and exponentials are important, but they're all very similar to what we saw last term. All right, I'll t uh, so I will see you in the next video.